Alright, the first thing we shall need is the Workwoman's Guide. Um, this is a reprint of the original, of course. You can also find it free on Google Books, but I prefer mine printed and bound, so I do tend to purchase the reprint. It is by a lady. Um, we don't know the lady's name, it's just by a lady. And it is an English book, and th if you don't know what the Workwoman's Guide is, it is essentially the Bible for the 1830s and 1840s. This woman, whoever she was, assumed that you were an alien plopped down into the 1840s and wrote essentially as if you had no clue. So she'll tell you exactly what fabrics to use, she'll tell you exactly how to make things, she'll tell you how to wear them and where to wear them, and what these are appropriate for. She includes absolutely everything. It has everything from furniture making to bed and linens and clothing items, which is fantastic. So how it's kind of set up is at the very beginning, it tells you your stitches. So what stitches to use and how to make them. And then it goes on to the actual patterns, but it'll tell you what fabrics to use and how to use them. So it'll tell you, like we're making a cap today, it tells you it'll, they're made of worked muslin, lace, tulle, blonde, and then it tells you all these specific caps. And there's a plate number and a figure number. So at the very back of the book, there are these lovely plates. Here we are with our caps. And um, let's see, which one were we doing today? I think we were doing the figure 9, 10, and 11. So there's the made-up cap and both pattern pieces. So on the pattern, back on page 120, whatever that was, it'll tell you, cut a piece of fabric this long by this wide, which is this part, and then it'll have, draw a line from here to here and here to here. And that is essentially how you make up your pattern. And then you sew it together and you trim it. So they're not step-by-step -step instructions. And if you're just starting out, you might find it to be a bit difficult to follow. But if you have some sewing knowledge, it should go together fairly quickly. If you're doing the 1830s and 1840s, you do not have the Workwoman's Guide, I would highly suggest obtaining. And of course, you should also need some fabric. So today we're going to use the Swiss Dot, also not known as dotted Swiss or dotted muslin. It is a very sheer, fine cotton with little dots on it. Uh, do be aware that if you're purchasing Swiss Dot, that you do need to purchase the dots that are sewn on and not glued on. And also something to note when you're making up Swiss dot for living history is that today the raised bits is the out, uh, outer part of the fabric. However, in the 19th century, the raised dots was, or the, was the wrong side. And so we're gonna use this part as the right side of the fabric. This, I do believe, is pronounced point de espere. Um, could be totally off on that. Um, but it's essentially a dotted net and it is very expensive. Of course, you do want it to be 100% cotton. You'll see them being sold for three to four dollars a yard. That's polyester or nylon. You don't want that. It's going to lay differently. The dots look different. It's going to be stretchy. You do not want that. But it's a very good viable option for cap making. Wall or lawn. This is actually a piece of wall. And I was going to make up the wall cap today. Um, would you believe that I don't have enough? This is. I thought I had a whole extra two yards, and this is all I could come across in the closet. So I had to order some more wall, and so we, um, we're going to have to use the Swiss lawn today. Of course we're in the middle of the plague, and so it's going to be a while before my wall gets in, so yeah, we're going to use the other fabric today. And of course you could also use cotton net or bobbinet. Um, this is not the nylon stuff you can get for 99 cents at Hobby Lobby. This is decidedly more expensive, but very nice to work with. You shall need two types of scissors today. You will need your paper scissors and some fabric scissors. All right, we're gonna need some supplies to make a paper pattern before we cut into our fabric. Um, one could use brown paper on rolls. Rolled paper would be best and you don't have to tape it together, but I'm gonna use printer paper because that's what I have on hand right now. Um, so tape to tape it together, pen to mark it, and various rulers and tape measures to essentially mark your pattern. And of course, various types of trimmings. So this is a Swiss um, edging and uh, you don't have to add ribbons to your cap but as I portray a woman who was married to a senator and the daughter of the wealthiest man in Texas I'm going to add ribbons this is left over from a bonnet that I have made and so yes we shall be using that and then of course we shall also be using some actual silk ribbon this will be used to tie it up in the back and so as always the first step shall be to read the directions since we actually have directions so we shall be working on the dress morning cap. It says plate 15, figures 9, 10, 11, as I showed you earlier. It says this cap is in two parts. For half of the front piece, figure 9, cut a piece of paper five nails and a quarter long and two nails wide. D is the double part of the net, cut in a straight line from A to B, which is half a nail from the side. 
Slope from B to C, which is one nail and one half from the bottom. For half the crown, cut a piece four nails and three quarters long and two nails and a half wide. Slope off from the top A to B, cutting off half the, a nail. D is the doubled or middle part of the crown. In making up, the headpiece is wired all around and the crown is then set quite plainly for two nails above the ear and the rest plated in a small neat pleats quite in the front and take two pieces of wire rather shorter than the front of the cap and quill them to the tool blonde or lace or similar to that of which the border is made the quilling should be narrower than the border and only moderately full a ribbon must be laid upon the edge to conceal the stitches and wire when these bands are put up on the cap one of them is laid on close to the crown and the other between it and the front the cap is plated a little behind to make it fit and a small bow is put in the middle of the back. A ribbon forming also the strings is passed over the front and a small bow put on to one side close to the border. In making up the cap more simply, as a, or as a bonnet cap, which is what we're doing today, the two trimmed bands may be omitted and wire or gauze ribbon merely put across the crown in the front with two or three loops between the borders. All right, so I went ahead and printed a full page version of the plate, which is exceedingly useful. And I measured out exactly how long in inches, since I do inches, how long and wide each piece should be, because, so I don't have to keep going back and forth with the computer and the calculator. And so what I shall need first is just over 11 and 3 quarters inches in length for the front bit. It's 11.8. 4 inches wide. And this is how wide our first piece, which is the front, shall need to be. This one is slightly less wide as I need it, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut out this bit. So this one needs to be four and a half inches wide. Might as well do it on the same line. Four and a half. And ten and just under three quarters. So there's our base pattern pieces. And so now we're going to draw the shape. So it looks like the front is D, okay, so this was D, it's double part of the net, so you're going to put this on the fold, which makes a lot of sense, given the shape of the finished piece. Cut in a straight line from A to B, which is half a nail from the side. I'm assuming that means B is half a nail from the side. So straight line, we're going from this edge to this edge. This must be B. So that's half a nail from the side, which will be just over an inch. An inch and an eighth. Let's put it that way. So the, and that is the whole length of this. So let's go ahead and measure that this way. An inch and a half and a fourth and an eighth. Okay, I'm going to mark that as B. And then we're going to do a straight line from this corner. Through the B. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay. And now we're going to need a curved line to this one. So let's see what it says. Slope from B to C, which is one nail and a half from the bottom. Okay, so from the bottom, one nail and a half. So that's one and an eighth. It's half a nail plus two and a quarter. That's three and three eighths inch. Okay, so that should be here. And we're going to slope it. Looks like it kind of comes over here and goes to a very fine point. 
you had a French, um, what are those called? French curves. That would be insanely helpful here. I do not. Okay, I like that. Now, I'm actually not going to do, am I going to do the ties like that? I can't remember what I decided. If I decide not to do the ties, which I may not, so this is going to be under a bonnet, and the bonnet, yes, because the, cat, the bonnet ties will hold on the cap. So I'm not going to put ties on this. So what I might do is kind of curve that up. It can give me kind of like a cheek tab type situation going here. And kind of curve this a bit more. Maybe not that much. Where's my case? From here. Yes. Now, of course, if you actually want um, the ties, then you're not going to do this part. top A to B. That's A and that's B. Cutting off half a nail. Maybe that's half a nail from the top. Well I do know something for certain. It says D is doubled and that's this size. This is on the fold. You know I think it means half a nail on both sides. If you look that looks about the same as that. So I'm thinking they're meaning both. Half a nail again would be one inch and an eighth. And that looks like theirs. So let's go ahead and cut this out. Take this off, keep it here more. Okay, keep it more. Now remember, this is your piece without seam allowances added. So we're not going to cut this exactly, we're going to cut it with whatever seam allowance we choose to add. Now recall that the flat, smooth side will be our upper, and this roughy, rough side shall be the not part that we want, essentially. So I'm going to mark all my things on this. My assumption was the next step was going to be putting on the trimming. However, um, when I'm looking at this, I noticed this one only has the trimming on the top, but I'm not doing the ties. And I think having the trimming stop right there without the ties is not going to be very pretty. So I'm seeing a lot of these other examples with the trimming all the way across. And I'm thinking I'm going to do that. And so I think the next step is going to be attaching the two pieces. So it does say that it's going to be set plainly, which means no gathering or pleating of any kind, for two and a half nails above the ear. So I went ahead and took um, my front piece and I measured where my ear ended so that I can go up two nails, I suppose. Here. But again, we want the most of the fullness, the height, Concentrated at the top because this is an 1830s cap and I'm going to have quite tall hair. Ooh, that's not very much to be gathered. Okay. <laughs> now I will say the original pattern did say that to um, wire the cap. However, um, a lot of the bonnet 
caps that I am seeing do not have wire, and so I'm going to skip the wire part. Um, I don't want anything structured underneath a bonnet anyway, because the bonnet is enough structure. And this bit shall all need to be pleated in. Next step is to stitch that together. So I went ahead and folded the selvage under anyway because I didn't like the very large half inch seam with the delicateness of this cap. So I went ahead and folded it over. Alright, now the basic cap part is complete, so I'm going to go ahead and add a ruffle. Um, looks like there are three ruffles on the original, one here, one here, and one here, blue dogs, and one here. I think I shall start with the one here, and then do the one in the middle, and kind of work my way back. So what I'm going to do is lay it on this way, and then fold it back, and stitch it kind of like a Renafel seam to hide that raw edge, and to keep the lace going that way. But first I need to... Um, Complete it. Alrighty, so the camera decided to die on me, so um, <laughs> I had to charge it. Basically, I just put the um, edging on. So you saw me last finish this one, um, and I just went ahead and stitched it over top, so I had all the edges finished. Put on one here, and then one on the edge, and I just finished that. So I did not finish right in the very back, because we're going to put a ribbon in there, just like the picture shows. 
kind of draw it up. We're going to work on this one. So I'm going to use my small ribbon, silk ribbon. So there she is. I finished the trim and I st just tacked it on. Um, and so yeah, I think what I'm going to do is take the uh, these bits and the one or two originals I saw that still had a ribbon attached, they were just cut across and left there. So I think that's what I might do just because that's what evidence I got. I did try it on and I do like it a lot. So what I think I might do is go put some sort of fashion of 1830s hairstyle and then we can look the cap on and then look at under a bonnet. Alright, there's my somewhat of a attempt of an 1830s hairstyle. I have not quite figured out my 1830s hair yet. Um, so this is as close as we're going to get um, with three minutes. So it's all we, got, all we got here. So let's see. I might have to go to the other room and get a mirror. Yeah, that looks like an 1830s cap. <laughs> it feels like it's... There it is. Okay. Over my hair. I'm doing this without a mirror, so... Yeah, maybe. Um, let me go check that out in the mirror and I should be back. Okay, I actually love it. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's perfect. Okay, let's try the bonnet. appropriately 1830s. That's so fun. I love it. So yeah, I think the cap turned out very well. Um, it is appropriately insane and crazy and it's far too much, but that is the purpose of the 1830s. So I'm very happy with it. And um, I think I shall need to make some more now. Um, so yeah, I will see you next video, perhaps another 1830s cap. Say hi! Do you like mommy's cap? Do you like mommy's cap? No? You think mommy looks ridiculous? Yeah, you think mommy looks ridiculous. Alright, so thank you so much for joining me and I shall see you next time.